Hi, this is Kyle Andrew here with Uncensored Pillow Talk. Paju is away with family right now, so it'll be just family today. And I have here the very sexy, already cuddled up on our couch, Leo Forte. Leo, how are you tonight? Fantastic, how you doing? You look like you're just so full of love, so full of love. It's all in the eyes. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for coming by. We're really happy to have you. I'm happy to be here. I'm kind of excited. I've, I've been looking forward to it. I have no idea what was on the table, so I'm like, okay, tread with caution. But I get a bed, I get to be comfortable. Oh yes, cuddle up, get as comfortable right, as, as you this. want. We'll even uh, order you some room service at the end. Great, um, my idea of room service might be different than yours, but I'm down. I think we're thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you, where'd you grow up? I was born in Mexico. I came here when I was, I think about seven. I moved to Chicago, stayed there for pretty much my whole life. Jumped around a lot. Um, Finally joined the military when I was 16, and then I started going all over the world. Um, uh, that took me to the Middle East uh, once. It took me to uh, uh, New Orleans for the first time. I always wanted to go to New Orleans because I was a big fan of Anne Rice books, and they're all okay. uh, based out of New Orleans. So I was like, yeah, I'm finally here, but it was underwater. So I had to, um, I was in a medical team, so we had to pull people out of the water from Katrina and all that thing that happened. Um, I got out, back to Chicago, um, couldn't get a job anywhere, it was the recession. So, start relying on the body. Mm, relying <laughs> on the body. Um, so, I was there for a while, making like $9 at a Best Buy. It's like hell. This, 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 uh. And then I was go-go dancing about uh, four nights a week and bringing in like maybe $300 a night. So it was really, really good money. Unfortunately, that dried up for a season, so I'm like, what am I gonna do? Um, Let's do porn. A picture of you up here uh, with uh, <laughs> Mr. Pam. Maybe tell us the story about how you, uh, Mr. Pam, uh, became acquainted. Well, it's a series of events. Um, because yes, I started out, first of all, it was not easy to start out in porn for me. I have no idea why I was not getting cast anywhere. So I went through an agent. I have, find that hard to believe, but continue. Well, you know, it, it's a thing, and it, we can go into depth into that later, but um, it was difficult to get uh, any kind of work anywhere. I went to an agent, he set me up, and I started my first year. However, after that first year, I, um, I was um, very enthralled with the cameras, the, the lighting, the, I've, I've always been a cinephile, and this is as close to being Hollywood that I'd gotten okay. so far. So far. <laughs> so far. Um, and uh, I had a mentor at the time who, um, he was starting to like, do this too much, like it was, I don't know what it was an early onset of, um, but he couldn't hold a camera anymore, and he was, he was having a moment, he just threw it at me. He said, you do this. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? He throw it at you? He literally, it was like, he was like, do ah. this! <laughs> um, I had no clue what the hell I was doing. I was holding this massive camera, and I'm like, I hope I don't shake. So I started doing some research and um, I came across Mr. Pam's work. Um, she was shooting for Lucas Entertainment at the time. And I loved her style, I loved what she did. She wasn't doing porn, she was doing contemporary gay stories. Um, granted, some of them were very all over the place. <laughs> like um, uh, a bed in the middle of a, an empty field with like the Gosmer uh, curtains flying. I'm like, okay. that's not real. Um, <laughs> But I, I loved her work, I loved, what, I loved what she was doing, and I just had to make sure I met her. We ran into each other outside Powerhouse once, and um, I was actually there with an, uh, another porn model. We were about to go do the deed over at his house, and uh, he's like, oh, stop and meet, this is Mr. Pam. Oh, you're Mr. Pam! I grabbed her and I threw her against the wall and I started making out with her. I bugged her, I said, um, let me shadow you, let me mentor under you. You don't even have to pay me, just let me learn from you. <sighs> Excuse me. And initially she had hired my boyfriend, who did not work out for her at all. He's like, he was late, he smelled like booze, he was la. So, so it like, didn't work out for either of you? No, it did not work for them. Um, and she's like, how would you like to come and work with me? I'm like, yes, let's do this. Um, so what can you tell us about maybe some of your your most memorable experiences, I guess both professionally and in porn? This is just because it's funny to me and it caused some bodily, um, body damage. Um, so my friend and a uh, guy who was mm, seeing pseudo relationship, um, Brian Bonds, him and I were doing a scene for a line called Fetish Force. And um, he was tied up, I had tied him up. Um, and I forgot what happened, 
But, um, oh, I was trying to get him down on his knees. So I, I, I buckled his knee and he fell down. But he fell down and pulled forward. So he slipped out of <laughs> he slipped out of my hands and he just face planted flat, just in full bondage. Just, wah. <laughs> and I remember pulling him up and he's like, <laughs> so completely dazed. I'm like, shit, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay, he's fine, we're going. Um, so the next take happens and the same thing, I, um, I bring him down with my knee and he whips back and just clocks me right smack in the middle of my face, chips my tooth and I'm just like, I'm fine, keep going, tears, tears, it didn't affect me at all. Yeah, no. Um, it's grit, or, good determination. Yeah, so there, you know, there's a lot of things going on in, in the industry and one of the things that always comes up both, I guess in and out of the industry, what is your uh, opinion on, on condoms? Do you know when they were doing that, um, the, t the 10 year challenge? Yes. This is what I look like 10 years ago. This is what I look like today. Mm -hmm. um, one that I found really humorous, I don't want to say funny, just humorous, is uh, the 10 year old picture was condoms and the now was prep. Oh. Okay. Um, and I, I was working with the prep project. It's uh, basically like modern sex education for gay men or just anyone that would be in, in, in involved or intrigued in the idea of using prep. And um, they kind of broke it down and saying, okay, well, how many people are using condoms? And out of this and this, I think they said something like 16 or 17% said that they always use condoms. Ooh, now, okay. um, and out of those, you got to take into consideration, who's lying? Who's telling the truth? Right. Um, so to each their own and whatever works for you or what does not work for you is completely up to you as a consenting right. and hopefully mm -hmm. knowledgeable mm -hmm. adult, which is I'm boggled by what people don't know. But, um, I don't know. I think condoms uh, have their, their purpose. Um, I'm just not about them. It's, that's not my sex. My sex okay. is not like a trash bag on my dick. I don't feel anything. It's like when you're getting fucked one, it feels like a candle going up your asshole. It just does not work for me. Yeah, it can but, be less intimate. But uh, knowing that, I take my precautions for it. Um, I'm more so selective of my partners. I kind of, I take my medication. I make sure to get checked at least once a month because I am in the sex industry. So I kind of got to make sure that everything's ready to go. And uh, certain studios require you to constantly be testing. So you can be testing every seven days. Do they require days. you to be tested on your own, or do they sponsor? Like, I mean, imagine there's like there's options for clinic, or but do they do they orchestrate that, or do they expect you to orchestrate that? Both. Uh, there are oh, some. interesting. There are some people. I'm sorry, I don't want to say people. It's an entity. There yeah. are some studios, studios. who uh, leave it up to you and have results available if your scene partner requests from, for, from you. Okay. Um, they also make you sign liabilities and waivers, like, yeah, I will not sue because this is my choice as a consenting, knowledgeable adult. Right. And there are some who, um, they will pay for it. But, um, uh, how can I say this without getting like too political foot in the mouth? Um, they'll pay for it and they'll make sure that you're ready there, to there, go. There's a wide gambit of, of, of things that they require, things that they will offer to help out with, but in the end, there is, um, there are mechanisms put in place to help people. Okay, got it, um, got it. Because, all right, for instance, currently speaking, there isn't a, a test that will, um, let me choose my words wisely here. Um, if in a particular test done by a particular company, uh, comes out that you're HIV positive, mm -hmm. they'll instantly blacklist you. They'll say, you can't work. Okay. Um, and that could be whether you're HIV positive, like I'm positive, or you're undetectable. It'll, it'll mark you as you can't work. Okay. Um, and there's whatever red tape that says, oh, well, we don't have a system for this or that or this. We can't be too cautious. When in uh, actuality, it's, it's discriminatory. And, um, it keeps HIV positive per performers, specifically in the gay sector, which is okay. a, a large would, amount yeah. of, of, of men um, are HIV positive, and this current situation keeps them from working. So you're kind of like killing off your pool. There's processes now and people who are advocating for the situation to find a way to do it the right way, that you can be inclusive. Um, but for instance, uh, take Mr. Pam. 
she films condom porn. Okay. And for her, being a queer woman, being of California, she lived here in the Castro forever and a day. Um, she doesn't necessarily like the idea that she has to do it. For instance, it's a, it's a boyfriend scene and you're using condoms. She's like, that's stupid, that makes no sense. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get that either. Um, but if she makes it a condom film, it's not discriminatory because anybody can do it. It doesn't matter. I, okay, I see that. It's interesting. So, I think that was more than I wanted to say on that cop <laughs> topic. It's but fine. It's, it's, it a lot, it's, a lot of, it's, it's a lot of interesting things that I, 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 I think a lot of our viewers wouldn't have had insight for knowing. So thank you for for sharing that with mm -hmm. us. So beyond the the getting the getting tested piece of it, what else do you or the performers that you know do before a scene to kind of physically, mentally, like ready? What are some of the things that you that you that you see? Work out like crazy. Okay. Groom. Um, if yeah, and define <laughs> define groom because that has so many. Well, okay. Uh, for instance, me, if I let my hair grow, it just doesn't look right. It's not flattering. I had a caricature made today, and I was like, "That's I, I no, I hate this because I forgot to shave my head." Okay. But I was like, "All right, well, as soon as I get home, I'm doing it." So things like that. Like I'm not gonna, sorry, Mike. I'm not gonna touch this. I'm gonna let it grow. Um, okay. the, that's something that they look for me to have. Is that like burly man? Um, Can you do that voice again? Burly man. Uh, so I won't do that, but certainly like get rid of the hair here, uh, just, you know, cleanups. Um, now if you're bottoming, um, it's a process. Some of the boys really take it to heart. Like they don't want to, I will be squeaky clean all day. There will not be an issue. So they stop eating like the night before, maybe okay. the, the afternoon before, just like down tons of Metamucil and Imodium and they're just like starving the next day. Are we done yet? <laughs> it's literally in the, uh, we have a schedule that goes uh, from this time to this time, we're doing this, this time. So at the bottom it says wrap, feed the, feed the bottom. <laughs> wrap, feed the bottom. Yes. I love it. So can you, so we're gonna go from that to a couple of like this or that questions. Um, just to kind of get a little bit about you personally outside of, professional. just like, just shoot the shit. So who, what is your, who's your favorite superhero? Uh, I'm a very big Marvel fan. Yes, Emma Frost, the White Queen. Emma Frost. Yeah, okay. she, she's everything I want to be. <laughs> all right, all right. They were kind of uh, undergarment. Not really, because I don't necessarily wear any. That, um, that, is, that is an option. Um, I'm wearing them now because I thought, okay, let me be a little bit more presentable, maybe palatable. You never know what they're going to ask of you. Um, it's uncensored pillow talk. <laughs> we, we don't have any qualms about what you want or don't want to, um, to have here. But undergarments, I don't necessarily wear them. If I do, it's probably a jock. Okay. Yeah, it lets it breathe. <laughs> All right, uh, cotton or leather? Uh, well, I mean, you know that's a lot more difficult than you think. Um, leather because it's nice, it looks good, makes you feel good. Cotton because you just don't want to make your whole existence about leather. Um, so, you know, <laughs> go back and forth. I know some people, they're like, wow, that's amazing, I should make that my entire personality. And yeah, that's, that's, so it can be a yeah. little mix and match. <laughs> exactly. All right, relationships open or closed? Uh, definitely open. I am a slut. I cannot keep my dick to myself. It is just not going to happen. So, and that's that's literally in the first like two, three dates. It's like okay, so, well, the good thing is that most of the guys that I've ended up dating, I end up meeting through like some some orgy or like <laughs> hookup situation. I'm like, wow, you're really cool. We can get along. Um, so that really has been an issue. For a while, you kind of meet them in those situations that you kind yeah. of like. All right, you kind of meet them at the beginning. All right. It's, well, it's kind of like you know they say meet people at a date where uh, you'd have common interests, like the gym or like your or an orgy. Or exactly, we have a common interest. You know what I like? That's fantastic, and uh, really appreciate you coming here today and sharing us <laughs> so much with us. Um, I will say, uh, as much as we were hoping for. You oh. lived up to and surpassed our expectations here. You know, I kept it pretty tame, too. Like, you were an incredible performer here today. Superbiously tame. Like, yeah, you could eat off of this one. Perfect. Thank <laughs> you so much. All right. Thank you, everybody. It's Kyle Andrew with Uncensored Pillow Talk. Thank you so much. Have a Bye. good one. We're going to go get some room service. Yes.